Where did I get this bruise? Jeez. Hey guys, it's Taylor. Thanks for coming back to my channel. I wanted to go ahead and do the sequel or do another part of the makeup tutorials I've been uploading and do one on my skin. I did do this look today and I'm really liking how it's turning out. I'm actually filming this intro, um, like, when did I do it at least? What time is it? This intro is being filmed like six hours after I put the makeup on initially. So I just wanted to come back and really review some of the products that I used because a few of them were new. Um, for example, the Morphe Face Primer and the Morphe Baking Powder. And um, I used True Match Foundation today. So I'm really liking how it's looking. Um, a this long you know I haven't really dabbed I do see on camera I am a little oily around my nose area but um, let me show you what I did keep watching on how I apply and then uh, I'll share my final thoughts on how it's looking in my opinion it's not looking too bad I'm liking it so don't forget to like subscribe share and stay tuned all right, so we're trying the new Morphe. Well, it's new to me. I'm sure it's not brand new. Um, face primer. I've been using it here and there for about a week and a half. Personally, I don't really have a negative review for it, but I don't exactly have a positive one either um I'm pretty simple when it comes to primers I don't really have like a set outline of what I think should happen but I do want it to smooth my skin if I have like a breakout going on or if my skin's just not as smooth as it could be which is like right now now I'm putting on strobe cream and you can mix this with your foundation but I'm just putting it on my face on top of the primer it gives you a little bit of a sheen under your foundation or you can mix it with your foundation again like I just said <clears throat> a little glow glow you know so today I feel like I'm just going to slap on L'Oreal True Match. No. Maybe. I'm gonna do a little bit of it because this is my summer color and it's dark. But I can always color correct with my concealer. So just ignore this part where it's pretty orange and dark. Okay. It's not too dark, it's more more warm. So I always just slap on the foundation and then take more time when I'm contouring and highlighting. I think I'm gonna put on, I bought a new wig because my hair has been growing um, with the weaves that I wear because it would probably grow if I wore it curly like this all the time but I am a busy woman. I don't have time to manage curls, detangle them correctly without pulling your hair out and all that other stuff. Like I really just don't. I'm, I don't have the patience for it either. So I usually get like sew-ins with leave out um, and it's been making my hair grow a lot because I don't put heat on my whole head. But with sew-ins you have leave out or at least I do. And so the portions of like my edges and the top of my head that I leave out always ends up heat damaged because it has to match whatever weave I have put in. And I haven't done curly weave since the summer because I haven't been swimming and I just missed some long straight or wavy weave. Anyways, so now I'm trying to like sort of learn and transition to wigs so my full head is covered up 
and all of my hair can grow and my edges and top of my head can catch up to the growth that the rest of my hair has gotten um, the past several months. I think even a couple of years at this point I've been making sure to not have heat on my hair when it's down or have it put up in a weave. Um, and it's gotten really long except for those parts that I know I still put heat on. So that's why I know I have to do something to where my whole head is covered. And then I feel like when I get to a certain length of where my hair is like long while it's curly, I would wear my natural hair more. But let's face it, it still means I have to do my hair. It still means I have to buy all the products my hair needs to look its best. And really, it's just time. Like, it takes a lot of time, especially if I'm trying to stay committed to my film schedule with you guys. I'm like, my hair looks a mess. I have to sit down and do my hair for an hour, and then film for two hours. And it takes up too much time when I have other stuff I need to be doing. So, weave is just easier. You're always ready to go. I'm trying to get back in the gym consistently too, so I don't have to worry about what sweat will do to my hair and all of that stuff because weave doesn't have that issue that natural hair does. So I might be coming back on here and playing with a wig. I am not a wig expert by any means. I bought a cheap one to play with until I know what I'm doing. Um, installing it because I've also bought a cheap one to have like um, one of my hair girls not my current hair girl, hair girl but in previous I brought a I bought a frontal and she swore up and down she knew what she was doing it looked horrible and so that's why I was like the person I am has always been either one unable to afford the things that I wanted so I figured out a way to do it myself um, DIY events even makeup I figured out how to do it myself with cheaper products and that's why every time you see me on here I'm either using some of the same stuff or some really inexpensive stuff because I'm realistic I'm not gonna go and buy Tom Ford and Marc Jacobs and all this stuff and expect, you know, the people that I'm trying to help out, which is just the everyday beginner, I'm not going to expect y'all to go buy Chanel foundation. I used to have all of that stuff when I worked there for free, but guess what? I don't work there anymore, so I'm not spending that type of money on things when I can just figure out how to do makeup better with cheaper things like six dollar concealer not gonna do it boo boo and i don't suggest you do it either unless that's just what you want to do do what you want to do just do what you want to do that's the easiest way to think about it i'm not gonna leave my nails like that guys I'm just blending out a little bit at a time so I can bake around all the same time. The girl is looking fierce. My lights are a little too bright, so I'm looking extra shiny, but it's alright. I'm about to set. I'm about to set that sheet. So I like to bake under my eye. To prevent creasing I'm trying the new Morphe bake it's new to me every time I say new it's new to me <laughs> I don't switch whoa y'all that was too much you always want a really thin layer and that was way too much so it's probably gonna look cakey I can already feel it tightening and I'm gonna get pissed if you ruin something okay anyways so I bake under my eye and like anywhere where I crease or like frown at my face and there's a, a bigger crease. So laugh lines, under eye, here, cause I'm always like, huh? <laughs> um, 
And then everywhere else, I'll just set with my RCMA just to make it a little bit more mattifying and less, um, some people can rock the dewy look. I personally don't want to and I feel like it doesn't look good on my skin. Um, because the older I get, the more oily I get. And the dewy look plus oil zones and spots. It just For me, I just feel like I look like a greasy mess and nobody wants that. So as you can see, I still have like a little sheen to my skin, obviously I don't want it all dry, um, but I also want it to last long and not look like a grease ball. I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> While I'm baking, this is where I, if I'm putting any anything under my eye. This is when I would do it to prevent messing up the foundation work. And I will, of course, put on bottom lash mascara, but I do that after I um, spray my face. So um, I think the baking is good enough. We'll wipe that off. We'll spray. Well, first we'll wipe it off. I'm gonna put on blush and a little bit of contour powder and then spray. I like to spray after all of the powders are already on. That was the Morphe pressed powder. This is the Maybelline Fit Me blush in Berry, I believe. Doesn't look bad, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Bruh. Skin looking flawless. It looks dry right now, but wait. Another thing that I like to do is after baking around my nose, sometimes my little nose contour can get faded out. And you do want it very blendable. You don't want it where it's obvious, but I do want it to be, you know, structured. So if you need to, you can always go back and play with it a little bit more. I feel like these is one of, I feel like that is one of the things, um, just like eyebrows where I have to like have very, very particular or none at all. Let's spray. I'm using the Morphe setting um, spray, setting mist. I like it um, when I'm not needing something so like perfect. I will use um, the NYX matte finish spray. They're honestly, I think, the same price or close to it. No, I'm lying. This one's cheaper, but this one's pretty cheap and I like it. It's my favorite. Um, I like Mac Fix Plus too, of course. The OG. Sort of felt like I was ganging right there. I'm not a, a gang member, okay guys? Uh, I'm looking for something to cover my eyes because personally, I just want to have like a complicated eye look or something that's matte. Something that's set and needs to stay set, just to be extra careful. I spray myself, my whole face, like I'd like to drench it a little bit. And I don't want to do that so much with the eye look because you have several creases when you bat your eyes and you open and close your eyes a lot throughout the day. So it can shift, it can move. You don't want that. Right? Okay, bye. She's fierce. I did get my eye a little bit, but that's all right. I like to get my eyebrow, but I usually can get my eyebrow separately with um, a clear gel that I like to do after wiping off the powder. 
Sometimes that powder will run through your brow and make it look sort of ashy and powdery. Um, so this is Morphe as well. I did the whole Morphe eyebrow kit, which was only like 18 bucks. It gives you everything you would need to do eyebrows. I highly suggest it. Morphe is like my roll dog, if you can't tell. I mean, they just have good products for a very inexpensive price. I always get what I want out of them. I'm never unsatisfied. So why? Seven hours later. Yeah, so the only thing, like I said in the intro that I noticed is my nose. And I didn't even put any powder on this brush. I just sort of dabbed with the brush. And I feel like it's fine because I did put on the MAC um, strobe cream, which always sort of makes me glow. That's why I use it. I really equate like the shine that I have going on to that and to just the um, different moisturizer I use, the setting spray I use twice, you know, things like that. Um, because honestly, if I was oily, you would be able to tell. So the fact that I'm not even able to really like tell myself, I feel like it's a pretty good routine. I will be um, using the Morphe face primer. Even when I was putting it on earlier, I was like, because I've only used it in like shorter instances, I was like, I'm not too impressed with how it does for like pore minimization, which is what I usually use um, primer for. But the older I get, the more my skin becomes oily in certain areas. So I think I'm going to have to switch up what I sort of look for in a primer and not just look for like, make my face look like a doll with no pores. Um, which is always fun, but I also need to start prioritizing the the shine and the um, mattifying um, Element and I think that Morphe did pretty good. I mean six seven hours later and feeling pretty good about it, so I say even though my My lip from all the water and crap I've been drinking Stay hydrated um, yeah, other than that, I think it looks really good guys. So let me know if you've tried um, any of these products down in the comments below and let me know your experiences with them. And if you have any other primer I should find that does both pore minimization and helps with the mattifying and the oil control, let your girl know. I appreciate you stopping by. Please like, subscribe, and share and I will be back, so stay tuned. Bye guys.